Uh, it looks like we're about ready to start. About 5.30. Check the old, yep. Uh, so I think we're going to get started. So hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to SIP. Right? We are, we are SIP. This is a live streaming show where we will sip some wines uh, while sheltering in place. See? Sip, sheltering. You get it. Uh, now, I am not a wine expert by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm an actor and a writer, and I live in Los Angeles. This is Los Angeles right here. Uh, I'm sure you can tell from my background. Actually, yeah, over my shoulder is the uh, world-famous Los Angeles Aquarium. They just have the one fish. So, yeah. Uh, but no, normally I'd be spending my days auditioning for things like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, unsuccessfully. Or, you know, like donut commercials, successfully. But like a lot of other folks right now, a lot of my work, all of my work, uh, is on hold. And that is especially true for restaurant and tasting room employees at your favorite wineries. And that is the other great part about tonight's show. Because a portion of online sales from tonight's featured wines goes toward relief for those employees. So with that said, let's enjoy some wines as we together travel virtually to the central coast of California, which is where we will find the Tisha Vineyards and Winery. And right above me, uh, Greg Brady style, is their GM and head winemaker, Eric Hickey. How you doing, Eric? Hi, everybody. Doing good. Good to see you, Derek. Yeah, Eric Derek, that rhymes. I know. It's easy to remember, right? <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> Bing. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get to these wines in a second. But first, uh, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about you, Eric. Um, first off, let's get this out of the way. Eric Hickey, uh, have you ever had a Hickey? Mm, a couple of them seem to be attached to me a little hard. So like I, uh, I have shared with many people, when I say that name, they go, they look at me, what did I just say? And I, you do the universal sign. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, great. And, uh, has ever, has anyone ever not asked you that question? Uh, no, everyone. Yeah. Well, that's good. Cause I don't want to be the first, you know, the, right. the golden rule in comedy is always be predictable. So we got that out of the way. Uh, well, that's great. So um, first off, uh, you know, I know that your winery is a couple miles from the ocean. You have a great view up there. And I hear you're an avid surfer. Uh, yeah, I tell you, there's no better place to make wine than at Letitia. We often say um, when you're, you're standing in the vineyard, you, you look at the ocean and we say, hey, maybe we should have a board meeting out in the water. Uh, a little hard right now. But uh, it is quite possible from where we where we sit. Nice. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, well, great. Um, do you ever just want to like go to work and you know you're like tired of your gorgeous views and the beautiful ocean and just be like, I would really just like today to like take a subway to a work in a window with no you know building with no windows anything like that. Hasn't crossed my mind yet, Derek. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Not. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. I understand, too, as our segue to our first wine, that you uh, have recently taken over all of the winemaking, including the uh, sparkling wine division from your dad, Dave. Yeah, that's right. So it's a it's a family tradition. I got in the business 20-something years ago, of course, through my father, who'd been there for many, many years, just retired. And he um, was in charge of making these beautiful bubbles that we're going to enjoy here. But he has now handed the baton to me, and um, I am... Managing to keep it in my hands the best that I can right now. It's exciting times. That's great. You, you follow in your dad's footsteps. Yes. That's great. Well, at least you guys have a lot to talk about. Uh, my dad was a state policeman, and, and I'm an actor. So, um, you know, we don't talk about a lot of stuff. A lot about taxes, I think, and, you know. Let's see that. The cost of gas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Riveting stuff. <laughs> uh, but that's great. So... With that in mind, let's uh, introduce our first our first wine, the sparkling. Uh, here is my display bottle here, right? It's your 2017 Brut Rosé. Put him in a place of honor right here. Great. I have mine. There you go. There you have yours. Great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and pop mine right here on camera, just so you know we don't deprive the folks at home of something going horribly wrong. Sure thing. Okay. And then I've been told that you're supposed to pop it uh gently so it's not to produce a pop is that a thing that's right you're actually supposed to twist the bottle not the cork and let it out with a hiss a nice little uh -huh. 
Uh, okay. But the more fun we know is boom, let it go. Yeah. Is it okay if I hiss, if I make a hissing sound with my mouth while I pop it? That works. There we go. Yeah, that was, that was good. All right. Nice. So let's pour this guy out a little bit. Okay. All right. And then before we, we sip along with everyone at home, I just want to introduce our little uh, segment, interactive segment, uh, Sip and Say. Check out my high production quality, which I understand is now backwards. So that's fun. <laughs> but Sip and Say. So we encourage everyone after we all taste together and Eric tells us about the wine. Uh, if everyone wants to post a, uh, a flavor word, one flavor word that you get from uh, this wine, we'll talk to Eric about it. And then uh, we'll see if your taste buds are at sommelier levels. Right. So with that said, uh, everyone at home and Eric, let's raise a glass. Salud. And let's do a little taste. Nice. Uh, Eric, tell us about this wine. Well, it's as um, classic a, a champagne as, as you can make. Um, we can't call it champagne, of course, in California, but our heritage is actually as a champagne house uh, built and designed and originally established by the French from Champagne. So we have kept that tradition alive. We talked about my father making the wine for many, many years. He has kept that French tradition alive and, and I am as well. So when you drink a bottle of Letitia, sparkling any of them, all seven of them, you, you know you're going to have a true method, Champenoise, as we call it, the Champagne method style of winemaking in these, in these wines. And your winery has, what is the, um, again, not an expert in wine, I, I, I looked this up and I forgot, you have two of the only, what are they called? Cocard, Cocard presses. So um, Cocard those press. are basket, yeah, traditional champagne basket presses that were brought over by, again, the Dutz group, D-E-U-T-Z, the champagne yeah. group in the early 80s, because they wanted to make it, again, very traditional. And um, for some reason, we're the only ones that have them. Um, they're a lot of work, but the juice that comes out of these presses is pristine. It puts the whole process on the right foot uh, in, in a beautiful way. Very nice. We're still uh, using them today. And you still have that? Yeah, the only two in, uh, in North America? Is that still right? That's right. That's right. And if you were to come to the winery in uh, Ose, earmarked the uh, 15th of August, you can come into the press room and you can watch us running them and, and, and smell the juice and the, all the activity and see it actually happening right there. Oh, wow. That would be a great reason to uh, come out of sheltering. <laughs> Yes, hopefully so. Yeah, very you know, nice. On that note, Derek, too, I wanted to just say thanks to everyone at home that is a, a long time and, and new supporter of Letitia. We know we're in different times. And, and as, the, as a supporter of the wine industry in general and in your trade as well. Uh, so any, any support, we, we greatly appreciate it. And we thank all of you at home who are listening and supporting us. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, so let's see. Um... What kind of flavors are we getting? I got some folks that said uh, they got raspberry. I had some folks say they got strawberry. I saw some there. Are any of those people, is that, those seem to be like the two most popular. Are they, are, they, uh, are they in the ballpark? Oh, definitely. I think the first thing you get when you smell this, this is a 2017, by the way, a uh, fairly new release, that fresh strawberry really pops out, that mm. light, delicate raspberry. Um, I think when it goes on to the palate, you obviously get that creamy mousse. Uh, that, that gives you that impression of that richness and softness. Uh, but one of the other things that we're known for, again, because you mentioned we're so close to the ocean, is our grapes grow in a way that retains a lot of the acidity. So it's perfect for sparkling wine. So you get the richness in the mouth, but then again, it's, it's cut through with the acidity, which is really nice. So a nice, delicate wine, that, but it's not too wimpy. <laughs> no wimpy wines here. No. That's right. Uh, so you're more of like a, a Patrick Swayze. Right, and the point break surfers. Mm. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Hardcore, very nice. Great. Well, okay, that is our, uh, that's our first wine. It was the sparkling. And uh, now we'll move on uh, maybe to some Pinots. So we'll take you out over here. And the first one uh, that we're going to go with is the 2018 Estate Pinot Noir. Right? This beautiful bottle right here. Got mine? Honor, right? Uh, this one I already do have a little bit poured. All right. And so remember, everyone, uh, now we'll try this one. Uh, sip and say. So after we uh, sample this one, 
feel free to post your uh, your flavor comments below, and we'll see uh, we'll see how you match up. So uh, here we go, everyone at home. Salud. Very nice. Um, yeah. So Eric, now I'm told that the Pinot grape, Pinot Noir, is called the heartbreak grape often because it's so difficult to to grow and a difficult wine to make. Yeah. Is that uh, is that your experience? It, but this is kind of your wheelhouse, right? It, it is. It's true. Um, some say it's the most noble of the grapes, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's a heartbreaker for sure. It's so fragile and sensitive. It's really, really difficult to grow. If you talk to wine growers, the vineyard guys that are out there working and the winemakers, it's so susceptible to, to problems. It has thin skins. Uh, it's naturally low yielding. And so it, it just tends to be a fickle grape. But at the same time, when it all works out, it can be one of the most fantastic grapes in the world, as we know. So you have to, you kind of have to, you know, have a little guts about a little thick skin when you're making it. Uh, and, um, Fortunately, I've been around long enough for 20-something years to have some really good years and some really tough years, and you learn from those tough years. Uh, I'll say this wine, the 2018, was one of those years that was uh, relatively easy. Uh, didn't have too many problems, uh, which was a nice thing. Um, we do, we are definitely invested in Pinot Noir at Leticia. Uh, we have quite a few acres of it and have for many, many years. And um, one of the things is just being, since we are an estate vineyard, I don't know if many people realize what that means, but... A state means that that's a guarantee that the fruit is from that location. And right. at the winery is on the site as well. So it's 100% guaranteed to be controlled by that producer. And so yeah. as, as we are, I've had a good opportunity to really learn the vineyard over the years and, and harden up, I guess, with, with Pinot Noir. <laughs> Great. And then I understand you keep your, uh, you keep your sales team uh, on their toes because you have uh, a lot of different uh, wines that you make. Yeah, um, I'm probably a little out of control, to be quite frank, Derek. <laughs> but when you grow that much Pinot Noir, you should be able to really, uh, I think, bottle a few different Pinots for people to try so you can re so we can really share the story of Pinot Noir. That's what I tell people. We're trying there to, you go. Uh, share You're, a good story. Story. You're a storyteller. A storyteller. It, you know what? Actually, Derek, at the end of the day, selling and, and tasting and, and dreaming about wine is really stories. And you know, where does it take you? Where does it, how does it make you feel? Uh, it shouldn't be too right. complex. Very nice. Yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, and is it true now, too, that the grapes can kind of take on uh, the flavor of the soil? Absolutely. We call it the uh, terroir. That's a French term. It means everything that influences the vine, the soil, the, 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 the ter terrain, the air, the proximity to the ocean, in our case, uh, will have an effect on how the, the grape, the ultimate flavor tastes. And there are some other factors as well, such as... Uh, whether the winemaker um, misses the pick by like two weeks and ruins it or uh, picks too early. And, you know, so there's other factors, but yes, definitely there's a, there's a typical nature of uh, Pinot Noir often. And you can see that in Letitia wines and, and many I know are, are longtime drinkers of Letitia. There's a signature to the Letitia wines that comes through in all of them. Uh, and it is sort of the Letitia terroir as, as we call it. Very nice. Yeah, I have to say most of my uh, ingredients and spices that I, you know, cook with involve cheese. Um, so you don't have any pinots that have the subtle taste of Colby Jack, do you? Uh, hopefully not. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you can add that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The 2020 Colby Jack. But we have some that'll go, it'll go nicely with it. It just doesn't necessarily have. <laughs> that's right. There you go. Yeah, that's good. So, are there any pairings that uh, you would suggest with the with this one in particular? Any well, this pairings? one here is a kind of a I call it a crossover Pinot Noir, and that it'll go with with your chicken dishes. It goes with your fish dishes, and it'll stand up to some of your heartier meat dishes as well. So it, it kind of covers all bases, which is also a nice factor with Pinot Noir that it's able to do that. Um, so I, I would say that if you're looking for a nice go-to, hey, what should I have with my meal tonight? This is a wine that can cover those sorts of uh, pairings. Great. Good one to bring with you to a friend's house if you're invited for dinner. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Very good. All right. So, yeah, I think we got uh, our sip and say results. I think we got a lot of people saying red fruits. Uh, you know, that's a safe guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think. I don't know if any of the um, watchers, listeners have picked up, but often we hear about this. We call it the Letitia Spice, and I'm, I've never been able to quite put on figure out what it is, but this sort of site, uh, spiced cherry, spiced strawberry, some sort of a thing that 
for years I heard about, oh, that's got the Letitia spice. And if anybody has any creative ideas of what that might be, please, uh, please let us know. The special ingredient. Nice. Yes. Very uh, great. Well, that will take us uh, to our third and final wine of the evening. And that will be the 2017 Reserve Pinot right here, taking the place of honor. Oh, yeah, I have to open mine. Got it. There Laura likes the Letitia Spice, I see. I see bacon <laughs> spice. Yes, very good. That Letitia Spice. Very good. A little bit there. Black go. tea leaves. Nice, nice description. Oh, good. Very nice. Uh, great. So, yeah, this is the, uh, the 2017. All right. Yeah, everyone at home, salute. Very nice. And um, I also understand that you at Letitia are one of the few wineries that uh, are SIP, another one SIP certified, sustainability and practice. Yes, and exactly. That, so, sorry, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, um, not only does it represent what we're doing right now as far as um, sheltering in place, but um, the acronym <laughs> for us is, like you said, sustainability and practice. It's uh, something that we hold very dear. It means that our farming practices, our business practices, and the way that we uh, treat, in particular, our workers, uh, are sustainable. And so um, it is an organization that will help us to uh, manage our workforce, our farming practices, in a way that is sustainable. And so each year, we to get the certification, we have to meet certain standards and be able to uh, uh, check certain boxes as far as what we're doing to be proactive and to be green and to be sustainable. And we're very proud to be uh, SIP certified, SIP certified. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. And then one of those things involves uh, having goats do some of the weeding uh, on the property. And I understand that this, uh, you recently named one of the goats. I have a picture of her right here. <laughs> Joy. That's Joy the goat. We've got Joy the goat. We've got um, the goats are very good. We can, in the off season, when there isn't any growth, we can let them wander through the vineyards themselves um, when there right. isn't any fresh growth because that's like candy to them. But we also use them, we have quite a large property, so we use them for weed abatement, fire suppression, all those sorts of things. So they're very busy right now, uh, munching away on all the potential fire hazards in the coming months. Very good. That's great. I was going to say, uh, how do you make, make sure that you keep them away from the grapes? I was going to say, do you ever have to say, you're not going to get to watch Daniel Tiger if you eat the grapes? Because <laughs> that works on my three-year-old. I'm going to try that on Joy. Yeah. She's young. We can try them. For those kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Uh, great. So let's see. We've gotten some uh, responses. Yeah, everybody loves the goats. I saw green cardamom mentioned. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Interesting. I see that goats have uh, inspired a lot of comments. A lot of goat yeah. fans. I was a lot of goat fans. So what makes, I mean, what makes a, a goat goat? You know, the greatest of all time goat. Do you have oh, any criteria for what, you know, you know, who... Who gets to lead, who gets to you know, wander into the vineyards as opposed to who's on fire duty? <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with that standard. I haven't yet made that <laughs> ranking, Derek, but you have you have given me the inspiration to do so. I'm gonna have okay. to do that. Yeah, I might have to get on on the board of the SIP people just to yeah. you know give her some goat guidelines. Maybe you can come out and coach, uh, start training Joy so she can hit those those goals. Yeah. Oh no, that would be great. Love to add that to my resume. There you go. Goat <laughs> handler. Um, yeah, great. So let's see. I think that's uh, that's all the wines that we're tasting. Um, now, what we want to do now is take a few minutes. We're just going to do a few question and answers, and we'll try to pick them up here from the comment feed. So while everyone watching is thinking of some good questions to ask Eric, uh, I'm going to you know break the ice, and I'll start off with a couple for you. Okay? So three wines. I got three questions for you. You ready? All right. First one, Eric. Uh, if you had the choice, would you rather be a professional surfer and drink mediocre wine or be a professional wine uh, maker and a mediocre surfer? Derek, I'm already the latter. So that's where <laughs> I just have to accept my, my fate. <laughs> Stay with what works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good one, though. Good. Uh, second question. The movie Sideways 
amazing or annoying? Oh, that's a good one. Um, amazing in what it did to the industry of for us Pinot Noir producers, but but pretty annoying for anyone who who really didn't like Pinot Noir so much and and also just sort of jumped on that bandwagon. So that, that's a really good question. Um, we're still feeling the effects today of, of that, that movie, Sideways. I mean, they're really, yeah. it is undeniable the impact that it had on Pinot Noir and consumption of Pinot Noir, interest in yeah. Pinot Noir. Yeah. So you wouldn't necessarily uh, have to punch out Paul Giamatti if you saw him in the street. You might give him a hug. No, no he might be able to go out and see the goats. I might just give him a, a little special tour out there and let him see. He might be qualified yeah. to do that. <laughs> that's right that's right yeah, I, would, I would grant him special status yes uh, great um, good and my third question uh, who's your favorite celebrity that also rocks the shaved head ooh well Denzel Washington's pretty good at it I was just watching a couple of his shows the other day so yeah. you know I, I, I'm a slightly different shade as you can see on here but he does it much better than I do, so I, nice. I would I would go with Denzel right off the off the, on the quick there. Yeah, right. shave Denzel, very good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so picking up on a couple of the questions from our viewers, um, what about what's uh, what would you pair with uh, with this guy? Yeah, so oh, so the reserve is definitely <clears throat> just a little bit about the wine. Excuse me, it's um I would try to I would say it's a little bit uh, uh, bigger Pinot Noir. That's the attempt. Not only just bigger, but a little darker. We were talking about that red fruit and that spice fruit. Here we're trying to just bring in more of the dark characters by selecting different vineyard sites. So I would say this one now swings towards the other, other end of the pendulum. You know, some of your heavy cheeses you were talking about earlier, those nice stinky cheeses yeah. could be really cool with this wine. I know that it is. Right. Uh, some of your bison, your heavy beef, um, your richer sauces. Um, definitely uh, this swings that direction. It might overpower some of the lighter dishes uh, just by nature. Great. And so what's the difference between we have the uh, reserve and the estate? What, what, how can you tell them apart? What's going to, so, like you said, a little darker, one's a little bit brighter. Yeah, so, so simply, uh, if I was to take you into, this, into the cellar and into the vineyard, uh, I uh, have learned the blocks over the years and the general terroir we talked about earlier, the different flavors that come from various blocks. And I know the blocks that are going to give us that darker fruit character. <clears throat> and so I am uh, making this blend is, it is comprised of about 60 to 65 percent of those blocks that I know that I know are going to give me those darker characters, and then the rest is walking through the cellar and just cherry picking barrels that again contribute to that darker profile, or at least the attempt to do so. So that that's the difference. And then the estate catches everything else. The estate's actually the most dynamic. It catches every piece of the vineyard in one way or the other. So that's really the the attempt between these two wines. Right. Uh, I noticed that one's the screw top and uh, one is the cork. Uh, any reason for bottling them differently? or? Well, so like you said, so that when you take the estate over to your friend's house and if they don't have a corkscrew, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. but, but no, just the, the general um, uh, corks and screw caps are an interesting conversation and that go back and forth. But corks are very classic, very traditional as wine is. And so we prefer with our higher tiered wines to keep it more traditional. And right. with our state level wines to keep them, I guess you could say a little more user friendly. Although uh, the screw cap is a fantastic closure as a winemaker, uh, yeah. usually we will choose to have a screw cap over a cork just because you don't have bad wines. Yeah, with a screw cap. Great. And then I have a bunch of other questions about how uh, you got into the the wine industry. Well, I got in through my father. Um, I got to tell you, it was kind of reluctantly. I didn't plan on being a winemaker. Uh, I had been around it with my dad. But between him and the French winemaker that was part of the uh, original group that was here, we were just always talking and kind of tasting here and there. And uh, I would say I kind of succumbed to the pressure just to jump in as a cellar rat. So I just started as just a regular ah, old yeah. Grammy, my dad's Grammy and, and the winemaker Christian's Grammy. And it just evolved from there. And uh, I caught the bug and nice. rounded it out. Right. 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 Yeah. Did you have to escape out of the cellar, you know, like, uh, you know, like a French novel or were they just allowed to after a while? <laughs> it wasn't quite underground as, as it might sound. So I was able to get out of there and, and do some different things and, and run out to the vineyard and go taste some grapes, you know, just to get a break. But yeah, it was, it, it's been a good ride. And like I said, just uh, all around learning the vineyards and the wine has been a special treat. That's great. 
Um, well, very nice. Let me bring out, let's bring out, um, you know, we're going to do a curtain call of today's wines so they can all, you know, take a bow. And, you know, as we close out, I just want to remind everybody, here we go. See, this, this is like, this is like a fashion show, Eric, where the models come out onto the, you know, the runway afterwards so they can like, you know, congratulate Tom Ford. So in this case, that's you. Do you feel like a fashion designer right now with your models in front of you? Uh, finally, something good to look at. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right? Thank you so Very good. So, yeah, we tasted the sparkling and two of our Pinots, the estate and the reserve. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna kind of close it out for, you know, today's episode of SIP, Shelter in Place. Um, I'd like to thank Eric. And uh, I just want to let everybody know that these, li- these wines, if you're not already a club member, and receiving them, uh, you can do that, right? Become a club member. Uh, they're also available uh, online. You can also find them locally in stores, and you use the uh, product locator, which you can find on uh, Letitia's website. Uh, so you can find them in stores. Um, but especially, I can't stress enough, in these times, it's great to have them shipped uh, right to you. That's Can't beat that. Um, and then again, thanks, everyone. So a portion of tonight's proceeds will go to help uh, all of the employees of the restaurants and the tasting rooms. Um, and so, yeah, here they are. And then, and Eric, if you can just remind us again, other varietals, we had that question too, that you guys have in your roster. Sure. We, uh, we do quite a uh, nice array of Chardonnays as well as a little bit of Syrah. Uh, and then we have a couple of, uh, Bordeaux blends as well that you'll find in the tasting room. Uh, if you're looking for more of the cabs and Merlots and those sorts of things. Amazing. Uh, well, great. Eric's been fun. And, uh, sure. you know, to everybody else, um, thanks so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. And for now, anyway, stay home. Salud. Thanks, Derek. Thank you.